I, I got the privilege to go to the middle school Bible study today. And if you if you heard me uh, earlier, then you would know that um, I'm a little jealous because, like, I'm a little jealous. Lauren, can, can we show this picture real quick? Um, I took a picture of that. There are so many middle schoolers in Bible study in there. Like, I'm telling you, I didn't take, I, I, like, I wanted to take, like, a, like, a, like, if I could take pictures with my eyes, I would, because, like, there were literally, like, they had chairs in between each row, and there were, all the chairs were filled, and then there was kids all in the back, like, lined up. Like, like, I'm like, why can't high school be like this? Like, I, I want to pack out, like, middle school, bro, because middle school, middle school has been, like, middle school's killing it. Okay, I actually make sure it cropped my face because I didn't really have a cool face. Because I took the picture in like the .5 of the iPads now. The new iPads, the, the iPad, yeah, our iPads got .5. Now our, our iPads have .5, the 10th grade. Yeah, y'all don't have .5. 10th grade on our, yeah, and 11th grade. On our front facing cameras, we have .5. So it, it expanded the picture and it made me look really weird. But let me just tell y'all, let me tell y'all, let me tell y'all. Uh, uh, next week, next week, Let's look, let's look like middle school Bible study because, man, they kind of showing y'all up really bad, like real bad. So, I don't know, y'all. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so, invite, invite. It'd be great. It'd be awesome. Uh, we are in our first week of a brand new series called Reach, and it's all about seeking God and everything. Um, I've had the idea for this series. Oh, it's uh, I had the idea for this series a little while ago, and it didn't really, like, like, it didn't really hit until, like, I had to go through circumstances to understand it. Anytime I feel like I preach a meaningful message, I always have to go through, like, I always have to go through circumstances that make me understand it more. And so, you're going to get, you're going to get a real message from me, um, a really recent feeling message from me, and we're just going to, we're going to go with it. The title of the message today is, I think, really creative it's really creative it's called don't stop believing you know you know what it's like to this song don't stop believing yeah yeah listen 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 don't get mad at me i was sick yesterday okay i was sick yesterday don't get mad at me for it um but look we are gonna read in mark chapter 10 uh verse 46 through 52 and if i'm mathing right that's like six or seven verses um, and then we're going to pray. So, Mark chapter 10, verse 46. We're talking about, uh, what's the, where's Bartimaeus? Bartimaeus. I was about to call him Barnabas. Uh, so, verse 46 says this. They, then they came to Jericho as Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city. A blind man, Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. All right, listen to this one part. This one part is really important. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more. Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they called to the blind men, cheer up on your feet. He's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you, what, what you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man was probably like, you know, you know, see, I don't see. Can you see? The blind man was just like, I can't see, but like, can you see? Cause like, I kind of, I'm kind of blind. And I'm like, I, and I feel like Jesus kind of like messing with him in this. Cause it's like, like I'm blind. What do you expect me? Like, so it goes on and it says, the blind man said, rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. Uh, this is also bolded. Remember this. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. Let's pray and then we'll keep going. Dear God, I thank you for this day and I thank you for what you bless us with. God, I thank you for these people. God, I thank you for this group of um, high schoolers. Speak to us in a new way. Uh, help me speak through me and say what you want me to say. Uh, help me say only what you want to say, not what I want to say. And then we pray. Amen. All right. Don't stop believing. This whole point of this series is just to tell you to keep going. Like you may feel like you're on the you're, you're like, you just want to, you want to be done. You may feel like you're just you're tired and you're over it. But I want to let you know to just keep going. It's worth it. I feel like we should have, I probably should have preached this sermon series in the fourth quarter, 
but I feel like right now we should probably preach it. So um, whenever you're studying scripture, I think I had a really bad voice crack. Whenever you're studying scripture, you, whenever you're studying scripture, you always have to like look at it in context. You, and then you also like, whenever you're, whenever you're looking at it, like specific names always have like, have like a Hebrew meaning for it. And I found this, I found this really cool website that it'll literally like, it'll, it'll have the scripture and the verse. But you can like you can you can highlight your cursor over it or your mouse over it, and you can like see the, what it is in Hebrew and the definition for it and like the meaning of it. So it's really cool. It's a really cool tool to study the Bible. Um, and so we see that Tamai, which is Bartimaeus's dad, um, means precious and valuable. And Bartimaeus means son of the unclean, or son of Tamai. Little backstory. Um, whenever you, um, back then, whenever you have like an issue, if you're mute, if you're deaf, if you're blind, and it, back then the culture, it meant two things, or one or two things. Either one, you messed up, or two, your daddy messed up, or your mama messed up. And so God cursed you for it. Um, and so we see that they, they looked at Bartimaeus and said, shut up, people were telling him, shut up, shut up, shut up. They rebuked him. They told him to be quiet because they didn't have, like, any kind of respect for him because he was, just, like, he was blind. So he was just kind of, like, disabled. Um, and, but we see that Bartimaeus, like, Bartimaeus, Bartimaeus is the son of Tamai. But Tamai means precious and valuable. And, I, like, I was thinking about it. And it's like, the world will always deem us, like, you're dirty or you're rotten. Or, or you're not worth it, or you're, you're, you're not precious, you're not, you're, not, you're not this. And the world will always like, talk so much trash into you. But if we realize that we, if we realize that we're the son of the king, and we realize that we're, 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 the, we're the children of God, then we realize that we have value. We, we are precious. And so because we are the children of God, that means we have value. And I wanna let you know, that the obstacles and the circumstances you're going through right now, and it may make you feel unworthy, and you may feel unvaluable, but I want to let you know you're the daughter and king of a, or daughter and prince of a king. You're the, you're, 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 the, you're, the, you're the princess and the prince of a king. You're the daughter and the son of a king. Like, you have value. You're, you're precious in his sight. You know, like, Jesus loves the little children of the world. Red, yellow, black, and white. They are precious in his sight. Yeah. You are children of God. You, you have a purpose. You, life is not unmeaningful. If it was unmeaningful, then there would be no, there would, there would be no reason for life. God, God has blessed us. God has given us something. God has given you a value that nothing can take away from and nothing can hurt, hurt you for. Um, and so, like, I've gone through a lot recently. I've been sick, and I've had a whole bunch of other stuff on the back end of that. I know. Oh, oh, oh. He was oh. sick. Oh. 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 <laughs> it was a viral infection. It was a viral infection, guys. Technically, it was a viral infection. Um, but, like, I've gone through a lot recently. I've been sick. I've had some, like, a bunch of other stuff happen. And I've realized two things. Um, I win in life, and I lose in life. But those two things always have something in common. Is that when I lost, I lost with God. And when I won, I won with God. Because, because, but the only reason I was able to recognize and know that I won and lost with God is because I was able to seek God in that circumstance. And whenever you seek God in your problems, whenever you seek God when you're hurting, you, it's almost as if you're not, you, you, don't, you don't do it in a, alone. Does that make sense? Let me, let me read this. I read this verse to you last week. I'm going to read it more specifically and in depth. Psalms 23, 4. Um, Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. For you are close beside me, and your rod and your staff protect me and comfort me. I know that sounds a little bit different from the normal version, because everyone knows the KJV version. Like, your Lord, like, like, he leadeth me behind still waters. Like, you don't get the leadeth part. Um, but I read, I read from the NLT because it's a little bit more like able to understand. Um, it's saying that David walked through the valley, 
He went in the valley and he left the valley, but he didn't go in it alone. God, you're in a valley right now. You could be in a valley right now. You could be on a mountaintop right now, but you're not in it alone. You're hurting right now or you're winning right now, but you're not in it alone. Like, I want you to understand that the people told Bartimaeus to shut up. They told him to stop talking, but he kept shouting because he realized that if he had just kept going, if he had just kept seeking Jesus, if he had just kept following God, and people told him to stop. They, and people could have told you that, that this Christian thing is never going to work. Following Christ, that's for lamos. You have, you have all this other time. Or, or, or you're never going to be, people are going to tell you, you'll never be freed from that addiction. Or, or your daddy was bad, so you're going to be bad. Your mama was bad, so you're going to be bad. So you might as well just stop now. See, we can't, we can't let what the world, we can't let the world speak into us. Because if we let the world speak into us, I already went over all this, but if we let the world speak into us, it's just going to end up hurting us. And, and it never will benefit us. So you can't stop chasing God when you're on the brink of something. Bartimaeus was on the brink of something. He was, he was calling God. And the people told him to stop talking. They're like, hey, shut up. Like they rebuked him. They said, stop talking. But then it was funny. It was funny because the same people that rebuked him were the same people that were calling him. And it's funny because when the world, I'm not even going to get into that. Um, that's, that's another story for another time. But many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more. People are going to tell you to stop. People are going to tell you to stop ch chasing God. People are going to tell you to stop reaching for God. People are going to tell you that it's not worth it. But can I tell you, you're on the brink of something. You just got to keep going. And it may, it may seem like you're, you're, you're not there yet. It may seem like you got too much. Dang, that was fast. It may seem like you got all that going on. It may seem like you, you can't get there. But you're almost there. You just got to keep pushing. You just got to keep going. You, you can't stop now. You're almost there. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's troubles is enough for today. I want you to think about that verse as we pray, and we'll get out. Dear God, I thank you for this day, and I thank you for what you bless us with. God, I thank you for the people here today. God, I just pray that you speak to them. God, I pray you break down any walls, any barriers that they have in their life, God, and I pray that they speak to you and give all, uh, give, just allow, allow them to give it all to you, God. God, I pray for the hurting, I pray for the broken, I pray for the lost, God, I just pray you put your hands around them, bring them home, God. And that's in your name we pray, amen.